uh, Bill Buckholtz, Mayfield Village Council. Uh, I'll, I'll speak up for you and not overpower the mic. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I work in a lot of capacities. I'm connected with all things Cuyahoga County government. I'm a councilman in Mayfield, but I'm also uh, taking a course at CSU. So I really came here as an academic. I have a paper to write. So I started working on a paper, picked a subject. Well, I picked the Port Authority and decided it was too cumbersome about <laughs> a month ago and dumped it. I dumped them. And uh, <clears throat> I chose regionalism. So uh, kind of a research hound. And I, uh, I can't believe how much is going on. Uh, if you, you know, just Google regionalism all over the state, the county, whatever. Question becomes, Everything you've talked about, I read your report from the, the, uh, the previous report I read three hours ago. Uh, is there a central repository? You talk about databases, you talk about, uh, um, is there a central repository of cross-checking all the efforts that are being done? I mean, I have lists and lists of nonprofits, quasi-government agencies, everybody is looking to do something regionally. Is this just about tax sharing? Is this just about land use? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'll stop there. Not... Yeah, that, just to repeat the question, uh, oh no, they heard it on the uh, mic. The question is, is it just about tax sharing and land use? Wanna take a shot at that and I'll follow up? The tax sharing is actually a very small part of this. It's the planning and that's where the real benefit is when Minneapolis-St. Paul did it, when uh, the asset program of, uh, of uh, Allegheny County, when the EDGE program of, uh, uh, in Dayton took place, when Indianapolis's program took place, it was the planning that was the big benefit. An example, we have four transportation MPOs here in Northeastern Ohio. In Allegheny County, with 10 counties, and I know we're 16 counties, but with 10 counties, they have one. In Minneapolis-St. Paul, with seven counties, they have one. Now, we're, we're larger, but it works more collaboratively. But that's where the real benefit is. That's where the real meat of all of this is. Now, on the repository question, we have had, just by discussing this and taking this to an action item, more deliberate and appropriate collaboration than what we've seen in the past. And I'll give you a direct example. Chicago Falls, Stowe, and Hudson in the past competed with one another more than what we should have. We are, in the, we are that far away from signing a JEDSI of working together. And I can tell you, five years ago, that wouldn't have happened. Now that's just a, a local effort, and this of course will even be a, an addition to that. So. Uh, Thank you, and while you're down at uh, CSU, if you ever run into Dr. Tom Beyer, okay, he's been an integral part uh, on the academic side of helping us to achieve what we have so far. We've achieved a lot of conversation, but the action items will take place starting next year. Sure. Yeah, real quick to follow up on that too. Um, yep, sorry. One of the things that we have found is that a lot of the repository of any type of centralized information that's consistent has been formulated through universities and study groups. You have all kinds of professional organizations, Western Reserve Land Conservancy, the MPOs. They have specific charter strategies, goals, and deliverables that they're trying to achieve. So the information, the data, the land use that they track is based on what they're trying to achieve. There has been no common umbrella to date to collect that information in a consistent manner so that the Pilks and Lorraine and Elyria can know what Youngstown and Warren are doing to help guide what's happening in Medina County. Doesn't exist. This builds that. We're getting funding to help, help with this, to get all these pieces put together. Picture an online database where you could click and up on a wall show anywhere in the 12 counties and say, here's water, sewer, land, utilities, well, here's where we are. You take, for example, the utilities and the, and the infrastructure alone in the city of Youngstown. If you look at all regulatory agencies, water, sewer, roads, highways, bridge, they are approved to have a capacity of a population of between 225 and 250,000 people. Today there's 80,000 people there and we're turning over cornfields in Columbiana County to put in new strip malls. Why? It's expensive. 
One of the other things that collaboration does, and I'll get to this question because it usually comes up, is how does this help economic growth? When you look at the region the way we are today, and I'll give one example because it's kind of out there in the business magazines. Hyundai of South Korea, the car company, is looking to build a new plant in the United States somewhere in the next five to seven years. Obviously, the Alabamas and the Arkansas and the South are looking at it. Look at the infrastructure and the workforce we have here. But today, Lorraine or Lariria or somewhere goes, come here, come here, come here. Folks out in Honey Valley, come here, Cleveland, come here. And we're competing like hell with one another. And then it's winner take all. We get the tax revenue, we get all this. VM Steel out in Mahoning Valley, you've heard about that, do you? When you work together and say, come on in, Hyundai, all 12 counties welcome you. Look at this site over here and over here and over here. Wherever you ultimately decide, we'll help you come in. And then all of us share in that new growth. That's a concept that 20 years ago would never have been thought of. Today, that's where this is going. So that's a very good question about the central repository. I just have. Uh, in a minute, we're going to change the, uh, the tape so we can keep this program going. But I want to tell you, for nearly the last two years, uh, I've been fortunate to serve on the steering committee with uh, the mayor and have been representing all of you on the uh, steering committee of the RPI initiative. Um, there is modeling right now that we're working on that will show what each community will potentially receive or contribute early on. But as Kerry said, each of us are competing with one another. What this will do is it will level the playing field. And in a minute, we're going to come back and I'm going to ask the question of the mayor to explain the disparities of communities. How some communities, in, and he'll use the model of what's happening in Minneapolis, St. Paul, how you have some communities where there's almost a 12 to 1 disparity and how it closes the gap. Because if you close the gap, there is no incentive by those communities that have green fields to lure that Hyundai plant to come to their community because they need the revenue. But if we're sharing the revenue within the region, then there's less incentive to do that. So at this point, we're gonna take a quick little break. <laughs> 